DIYs by Dar. This week I am going to take a old thrifted frame and try to decoupage part of that frame and give it a total complete new look. So here is my frame. It was $5 at Goodwill. It is in uh, very good shape. You can see the back is still intact with the uh, heavy cardboard on the back. So I am going to go ahead and start opening up this frame to see what I'm dealing with because it looks a little bit different to me. Um, I've not quite seen a frame like this. It's a frame within a frame. And you can see the nails have it all um, secured inside there. So the first thing that I am going to do is remove all the points which hold the cardboard and the actual picture itself in place. And once I have all those pulled, I try to gather them up and throw them away. They're not fun to step on. And let's see what we have for cardboard. Just some old regular pieces of cardboard that somebody cut out and I will hang on to these because I will probably need them both to fill in that space to get my new picture canvas to fit in there. Here is the picture itself. Not a bad picture, just not what I liked, some swamp area. And then here is the glass, the very last thing which I will remove at this point and put it up in a safe location so I don't end up accidentally breaking it until the time I need to clean it and reinstall it. So I'm going to take these two frames apart. There are some longer nails stuck somewhat sideways holding this wooden frame inside a wooden frame. And the one that's inside has a canvas that's going around that outside edge. So I thought, what better thing to try to put decoupage paper on than a canvas? But I am going to spray paint this with Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer All-in-One in Espresso Brown. And it doesn't matter about getting the canvas painted. That may even help a little bit with the pores that it has on it. And it is glossy, so that's why it looks white. It's just wet. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry here in the Michigan sun. And while that's drying, I'm going to take my surf prep sander with some 220 grit and take the outside wooden part of the frame and give it a good scuff sand and look for any areas that need to be filled. And here is my paper. And this is a retired paper from Made by Marley. And here is her card. You can find her on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And their website is www.madebymarley.co.uk. And I will have it in the description as well. I'm a brand ambassador, so some of the papers that I get are um, provided to me. This set is not, and this is a retired set of papers, so you're not going to find this one. But any type of paper that you have enough of to go around on a frame, um, go for it. I'm going to put this on just like... Um, any regular piece of decoupage paper you're going to put on furniture or anything and get my layer of Mod Podge down there. And this has a little bit of a groove going down inside the other molding there. So I have to make sure that I do get some glue down inside that little crack right there between that glossy molding and the canvas material. And I need just a little more paste on the end before I start to put this piece on. And putting a little bit more down in that crack. Starting on the one end. And I always find it easier if you're trying to line something up. Get it lined up and get about two inches of it down so it doesn't move on you. And then proceed with the rest working the wrinkles out as you go along it. And then always take a nice soft cloth and just finish wiping that down so everything's holding and I'm getting some of that glue off of that 
um, other molding that's there. And I'm making sure that it is stuck down in all the corners. And also back in that little crevice there, I did put some glue back in there just to make sure that it stayed stuck down. Now I'm splicing two pieces together and I tried to match up the paper the best that I could so it would look very cohesive. And I'm butting the two pieces up and like before I try to get the first couple inches down so it doesn't move on me and then I will try to rate, uh, uh, lay the rest of it down. So right there I'm starting to put it down and work my way down the paper and then I will take that cloth and I will burnish it down. I needed a little more paste right here at the end Put a little bit more in that corner, make sure that stays down. And then we will take that nice soft cloth and just kind of lightly burnish that whole piece down and things went well, I did not have any wrinkles. I waited overnight and I decided to get this excess paper off because I didn't want to tear it by accident. So 45 degree angle, I have a little sandpaper device with 220 in it and I just um, rub away from the paper and then you should be able to just get that piece to just basically just about fall right off and then there you have it and your side is nice and even. Now, I have sides there you can see, and this was a little bit of a crease. There's some areas that I need to fix so they don't show up quite as well. And I'm just using some acrylic paint. This paint is extremely watered down. I just want to lightly hit over the top of some of them things that will fool the eye into thinking that it is one cohesive piece. And... Um, that basically was just a wrinkle. Now here's uh, a piece that was butted up to the other one. Um, I'm hitting it with my watered down black where I can to go through and connect those two pieces together, even on that outside edge where some of that white was showing. When I got it all completed, I just lightly sprayed those areas I hand painted with some clear matte spray, some Rust-Oleum because I did not hand paint for all of this to come off on this next maneuver of taking some more Mod Podge and putting it over the top of this frame. Um, I watered it down a little bit and then I used a sponge so I would not have any brush marks on this little framed area with the decoupage paper on it. And I just lightly went over with the sponge, kept it pretty much um, right over the top of where I needed it, down in that corner just a little bit, and it worked out quite well. Um, I ended up putting approximately three coats of the matte Mod Podge over the top of this, so it should be pretty good to go. Just have to wait for this to dry and we can move onward. Okay, this is the outer frame, and I just have some leftover matte Rust-Oleum paint and primer in a couple colors, and the paint on this outer frame that was green was awful chalky, and it was coming off all over on my hands, so I just wanted to set it into place, and I used up these two cans of primer just to make it a basic white, and so I wouldn't have any problems with that old paint coming off, bleeding off, um, anything um, that would cause a problem with my new paint, which is a silk all-in-one paint from Dixie Belle in the color Cactus. Now, when I go to paint a picture frame, more often than not, I am going to go for Dixie Belle's silk all-in-one paint. This paint is silky smooth. Um, it, it settles uh, so you don't see any brush marks in it, and I just really like it. 
it gives it enough of a shine where you don't have uh, to put another top coat on it. So all I have to do after two coats is wait for this to dry. I needed to cut a piece of mat for my actual canvas painting. I didn't have anything really decent to attach it to, so I took some Rust-Oleum paint and primer all in one in white, and I just sprayed that paper really hot out in the sun here this last couple days in Michigan. Things were drying fast. I just wanted the pores to be sealed somewhat so this quick and thick glue wouldn't um, kind of just stick to that paper and then become loose. So I'm turning the canvas over and I have this tight bond quick and thick all-purpose glue which pretty much says you can glue anything with it and I'm just spreading it out and I am going to put a thin even layer all over this whole canvas and this canvas I purchased it from Timu for probably two dollars and when I received it it was pretty crunched up I didn't know if I was going to be able to save it or not but I took my craft iron and I put it between two um, pieces of material and I was able to straighten it out now if you have a trick for this one let me know how you can get that top even while still trying to hang on to the bottom so it doesn't stick on there. Um, it's the same for decoupage paper when you want to try to line something up at the top. Um, it's a trick. You have to hang on to it, line it up, just get those first couple inches so it doesn't move without any wrinkles in it and then you can proceed and go the rest of the way down when you know that there are no wrinkles in that top part and you are heading straight in the right direction. So I am using a roller just to roll this. Um, this has some areas on it that I am going to have to fix anyway from when it was all crunkled up um, some areas need to be touched up with some black on the picture itself. Now that I'm done, I'm just taking a uh, paper towel with just a little bit of water and wiping any paste off the front of this uh, canvas. And then I will take a soft dry cloth and just dry it off and finish uh, pushing it down. And when this dries, I can start to paint some of the repairs on the surface, as well as my different gel mediums. Now here is the mat that goes around the picture. I saved it from the old one, but I had to tape off because I just, I like that little rim. So I have the clear mat spray and I taped this. And I'm trying to make a barrier so when I spray paint this uh, mat, it doesn't go on my, my little um, strip there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just taking some paint in the color um, French white. Bring that back. What is it? Matte paint and primer in one in the French white and I am going to paint the outside of that frame. It is just a heavy cardboard. It was slightly yellowed. I wanted to update it a little bit but still keep that stripe and spraying that matte clear just on that edge worked great. So that's a little trick can save you time if you're trying to paint stripes on things and want those ends to be sealed with a clear sealer. Just spray it on. So that little mat's ready to go around the outside of this picture and looks good. Saving that little border around the frame didn't seem to matter too much because the painting was so dark anyway. Live and learn, but I learned that one little trick. So um, from here, I have Deco Art Triple Thick. It is just a clear sealer, high gloss. I have acrylic medium gloss gel, and then I have acrylic matte 
gel medium. So I've got a high gloss, a low gloss, and a super duper high gloss that I'm just going to use on the fox's eyes, nose, inner ear, and maybe a little bit in the mouth. I need to make some repairs with some black and I water it down a bit because you really don't need a whole lot just to cover any areas of the painting that got skiffed off, um, rubbed off, enough that you can see that there's a line there. And then I am going back with my acrylic gels. I wanted to mix these gels because this was basically matte, but I wanted some gloss in some areas where the sun shined down through the leaves. I changed the direction of my stroke and I went in a downward direction and tried to blend those two together on the edges. And I put some of the high gloss um, on the fox in some different areas. Now I'm going back again with the um, matte color because it's pretty much dark there. And by the time I was completed with the whole fox, it took me about 15 minutes. So I will have to let that medium dry now. Um, I am putting the inner frame back in that outer frame and I am going to use this HM515 point setter. It was $46 uh, from Amazon and I'll put the description and link for you. Um, these are fabulous. Where they had the little nails, I'm going to use these little points. I had to really put it on an extreme angle. And I still did get that little um, point to go in there quite deep. And I didn't have to push it down too far. It was holding it in nice and snug as long as I tilted that. Um, I'm putting this painting back together the paintings in there I'm going to uh, put the cardboard back in and it is going to need um, another set of those points around that piece of cardboard to hold the glass and the picture in and this you can just put flat right up against and um, use your points and the picture is now secured we have our painting ready. The only thing left is it needs to have a back on it to really make it stand out from the rest and look on a more professional level. What I'm cutting here to size for the back of that painting is some heavy uh, floor protectant for contractors, not the light craft paper. This stuff is heavy. As you can see, it's curling um, as I have it setting there. I am putting the quick and thick tight bond glue all along that edge. Um, not real thick because I don't want it to soak through the paper, but I am going to get that paper on there and then I realize I have to set a book or something on it um, to keep it from curling up. So most requested recipes book one and most requested desserts book two and yeah that's kind of what i'm using them for <laughs> not the recipes i better get on it so that worked good and it it held great all the way around last thing some gold some bling bling not a lot just a little bit on my finger some gold gilding wax around the outside edge and on that outside brown frame that is kind of raised and there you have it.
Thank you for joining me on this one. This is a great project to try. Um, I will take this to my booth and probably put a price of $38 on it. And hopefully I will be able to sell it. Like, subscribe, hit that little bell so your phone rings and I can catch on the next one.